And one of the things that I found really helpful to use is tar paper. It's waterproof. Uh, it doesn't degrade. You can put it right on top of the slab uh, in, in its wet state and be able to transfer your, your shapes uh, right off when you're cutting. So um, simple chalk and simple construction grade tar paper um, to start by looking at some of the shapes and forms that you may be looking to produce. So really just trying to figure out um, basically the bottom half, like with this vase. Um, the nice thing about tar paper is that you can uh, draw right on it, cut your forms from it, you can actually build with the paper um, a simple tabletop uh, office stapler. You can work with two sides constructing that shape in space before you cut it and build with clay. I never really used a slab roller in terms of rolling my slabs or stretching my slabs out. Um, and uh, one of the things I found is that when stretching slabs versus rolling slabs, I had more cracking when I rolled my slabs out. So I started stretching them both for space as well as um, the later the, the cracking issue, but I didn't need to buy a slab roller. I could make any slab size that I needed um, and alternating directions, allowing that slab to catch on the surface. I like to work with a, a soft leather hard stage slab um, to be able to pick up texture as well as being able to hold its structure when I build with it. So usually stretch out a, a bunch of slabs at once and then let those set up to be able to cut up. It's really important to compress your slabs um, and to just take a rib and run that rib over the surface of your slab before you build with it. Um, <laughs> I like that rib. Following that template. Um, so one of the things that I'll do here is I'll cut both of these slabs in half so that they tend to be uniform down the middle or slightly left or right of middle. I'm going to cut them both at the same time so now I know that my left and my right, my front and my back are both pretty well on target. So um, these are just standard mats that you can find um, office, office supply, office space, hardware store. It's, uh, this one is the surface that you find underneath your desk. Um, the little teeth that are on the back that grip into the carpet um, are really helpful to, to give a nice bright texture to the, to the surface. And that's gonna give a nice physical impression on that side as well as on that side. So again, you're kind of dealing with front and back um, in terms of texture, orientation. So I'll alternate the two. One that has one on one side and one that has the other on the back. And I'll flip flop those in terms of how I build with them. Another one, I think this goes in the uh, Sink drain, maybe, or a wash of dishes. These slabs are a little stiffer. Sometimes they need a little extra press. And then if I put these together, I get book matched sides. Look and score these together with a light amount of water. Um, I want the clay to adhere together, and I find that when too much water is used, that uh, the surfaces slide around and don't actually knit together. So I bevel the two edges that go together so that the overlap is a little stronger of a joint, and they will meet up and then bend at a slight angle which will help to give me volume in the finished piece. 
overlap those. And then with the sponge, just come through and give some downward pressure to help tie those two things together. Rubber shaper and seal that seam. These slabs are like the perfect consistency. Hold up, I don't have to support them. They're not gonna flop over on me. And now too, what I was thinking about with this one is to have kind of two vertical, probably one taller than the other stacks that come out of the top of this. So I wanna close this top in and then I'll uh, constrict that down so that comes in. Then uh, I'll cut a dart out of there that then will bring me into two openings instead of one oval opening. Feel it's important on um, vessels, pots, um, objects to have a relationship between the surfaces that you see and sometimes the surfaces that you don't see. Um, I treat the bottoms in the same way that I treat um, the form itself. So take that. Apply a, a texture there too. Um, score this slab. Thing. Take that. Bring that up. Like that. Got in there pretty well. Trim off some of the excess, although I want to leave some. Just pick that pot up. Kind of tamp that down. Um, on larger pieces, then it's a little harder. I'll just use a, a tool to raise that up and help adhere that to the bottom of the pot. And with the, the wood tool kind of at an angle, um, sliding that in underneath, much like you trim off a, a foot on, on the wheel. You're able to bring that underneath, pressing that slab up into the underside of the pot. Just trying to make that stick, see that slip kind of squeeze out. So, and then with that rubber tip tool, these are kind of flexi bendable, uh, really forgiving tools. Uh, you can come through and seal that edge. All the way around. I'm really kind of double sealing. I did the, the raise of the wood tool, came through and sealed that edge with the rubber tool. And then I'll take my sponge and I'll roll that edge over so that it starts to uh, have some of the softness that the rest of the pot has. I sometimes spend an awful lot of time in my studio at this stage, really trying to refine those edges. I don't want them to look really regular, but I also don't want them to look sloppy. So take that wood tool, the point of that wood tool, and just re get that line in there again, allowing for there to be a visual separation between both of those slabs. It's also the fact that, that that's, that's helping to join those two slabs together. I'm kind of folding those two surfaces into each other. So in getting ready for the top half, I'm going to trim these level. Trying to figure out the sizes of slabs that I'll need for each side. I also tend to use the ruler as a scaling device. I really want these things to stand upright. They're 
they're architectural, they're um, vertical, and I want those two to have that, and I want them to lean or tip or bend or bow, and um, the closer I can get that to happen beforehand, um, better off I'll be in the long run. In doing materials research, um, I'm trying to figure out um, some way to allude to the construction of these objects, um, also to tie back connections to some of the um, historical references that I like to look at. Um, these steel carpet tacks, they're just standard uh, <coughs> cut steel tacks. Um, I started to find out that they can fire into the clay and uh, they don't leave. They don't cause cracking, they don't cause problems, um, they don't burn out. So I can, I shifted from adding a texture that would pick up surface to taking these um, tacks and placing them into the joint where these pots were joined together. I also think that they do some help in tying things together, tying the two halves together. Um, if I do get some cracks that start to happen, uh, the tacked area usually will stop the crack. So I'm actually kind of nailing these pots together. But just in thinking of the properties of clay and how clay shrinks when it dries, it can place these objects into the surface and then as the clay shrinks, it grabs hold of those objects and really um, they don't go anywhere. And the other material is uh, nichrome wire. Um, it's the uh, same material as your kiln elements. You can buy it in single strand. And using that to um, provide some scale shifts, um, size differences between the size of the pot. This tends to be a little bit thick, so I need to bend it around something in order to give kind of the curve that I want. There's a, we can check to see how big things need to be. Maybe I'll stagger my scale. Um, again, in that dialogue, maybe I'll move the big one. Maybe make a little one on the big side. Gives me a little space for that wire to go into. Again, thinking about how things are separated out. I want to have a little interim between the wire and its attachment and the pot in there. I think that that's that.